Um, now, presenter Roman Kemp says he still hasn't received a response from the government after writing a powerful open letter last week calling for mental health support to be put into every school. In the letter, Roman also bravely reflects on his diagnosis of depression at the age of 15 and experienced suicidal thoughts. But then for the first mm -hmm. time, Roman joins us uh, now. Where did the idea, Roman, come um, from to actually write this, this letter? How did you decide that that was the right thing to do to raise awareness? Uh, firstly, thanks for having me on. Hello. Um, uh, I think we, when, it comes, when it comes down to it, um, I kind of felt there was a sense of almost irony and almost a sense of, like, what type of weird Black Mirror episode is this, whereby I kind of felt like the only thing that gets things done these days is by if, speaking for myself, some so-called celebrity ends up writing a letter to the people in power. You know, we all saw, you know, how powerful Marcus Rashford's letter was and, and the difference that that made. But it's quite a sad reflection that, that people, I think, in my world have to write a letter for anything to get done um, because there have been people calling for what I'm asking for for so long now and, and calling this, you know, the, the pandemic that it is in terms of a mental health aspect. But also, <clears throat> over the past year, I've been able to, to go up and down the country uh, in different parts, meeting with with CAMS, meeting with the NHS, meeting with, um, as I said, the NHS A and E teams, meeting with schools, uh, youth centres, and seeing what it is that that can really make a difference. And when it came down to it, the mental health support teams and the difference that they're making in the studies going into how much of a difference they make into children's mental well being moving forward into later life was so great. And so when you look at the bare bones of it, what I'm asking for in this letter is merely a change of a target. You know, I haven't even asked for a date. Um, you know, currently the the people in power have stated that, you know, they, they have a, a commitment and their target um, is to place 36% uh, of schools to have a, a mental health support team. Sorry, so to place a mental health support team in 36% of schools, mm. which to me is quite a strange target. If, a, if my, you know, future kids went into school and said uh, they've got an exam and I said, what are you hoping for? And they said to me, 36%. Every school in the country would call that a fail. Yes. Um, so it was a bit confusing to me. So again, it was it was merely a suggestion to say, is there any chance that we can move that target to a hundred percent? And as we said, this is this is drawing upon your own experience, but it's not only about yeah. what you've experienced yourself, but also um, um, tragedy you've dealt with at work with the producer on the um, the team you're working with um, at Capital. Yeah, of course. You know, look, I, I'm someone that is is part of a lot of people. A, a very, I'm in a very common group to one uh, have experienced suicidal ideations of my own, but two, I'm. It's very common that I'm someone that is a part of suicidal grief. You know, which is a very confusing type of grief, but one that is one that is, as I say, so common. And and unfortunately. It's very common in, in kids as young as nine years old in some parts of the country. Um, and that's something that, you know, when I, when I looked at it and when you look at everything we've been doing kind of over the past few years, for instance, I, I've been pushing that line of, you know, asking twice, you know, making sure you're, you're bringing up that conversation, making sure people feel comfortable to talk about their own mental health. And when I looked at the numbers, I was like, my God, three years on, they just seem to be getting worse. You know, what am I doing wrong? I, should I stop talking about this? But really, what I'm looking at is people are stepping forward and they're being brave enough to come forward and say, you know what, I'm not okay. And so people, the general public, are upholding their side of the bargain. They're saying, look, we're not in the right place. You know, we've just been through the pandemic, been through everything like that. We're no good. Now we need the help. But the problem is, is that help is near on non-existent. Roman, it's, it's simultaneously uplifting and dispiriting listening to what you're saying because I don't want anyone to be unhappy. And as a mum of, you know, boys similar to you, your mm. age, I just, it, it breaks my heart that you feel that. Do you, I, I mean, but also, as I say, it's uplifting and inspiring because you're such a powerful and articulate advocate for this issue and what you say will have weight. And we're about to speak to the mental health minister. But I want to ask you, what do you think it is which triggers these feelings? Is it biological? Is it environmental? Is it circumstantial? Is it physical? Do you, do you have an understanding? Because I know that your mum suggested when you mm. were 15 that you go and uh, get some help 
and you mm. have found help, but it's yeah. not a cure, is it? No, it's not. Look, but look, mental health is something you live with. You, you only learn how to deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I made the point uh, before, and I think in the letter as well, I, I am the definition of silver spoon. I am the definition of a privileged life. And, and you know, it can happen to people in any walk of life the way, where you go through something like that. I was privileged enough to have a, a parent who wanted me to go and seek some help on it. But when it comes down to it, things like suicide, you know, what causes it? Is it, is it uh, you know, chemical, et cetera, as you say? It comes down to hope. And, and, and when you lose hope, that is when you are in that zone because there is nothing else that you feel like you are, you feel like you are worthless. You feel like people are better off without you. And I think with the current status, to say to someone, you know, 36% of schools can receive that, um, it, 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 where, where's the hope there? There's, there's no hope. And I, I've just seen, like, they haven't responded to me directly, as, as you said. Uh, they haven't responded to me directly. But my question would be, because I've just seen they've, they've come back and they've gone, um, oh, now we, we've moved it to, oh, it might go to 50%. You know, we'll place mental health support teams in 50% of schools by 2025. My question would then be this uh, to someone, maybe the, the minister that you have on later. My question would be this. If that is a 50-50 chance that your child is going to receive yeah. proper mental health care, a space for them to go to if they're feeling anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, if you had two children in front of you and each of them are, are saying that they are feeling this way, how do you decide which one gets the help? I, I, it doesn't make any sense to me to go to 50%. Any target should always be 100%. That's a jaw-dropping way of putting it. I mean, that absolutely... Mm hits at home. Roman, thank you for thank you. being with us. Um, oh, thanks so much.